All right, we're at uh, Daf Sadi Tet. Uh, we have a really fun Daf, a lot of uh, uh, interesting theoretical cases, and uh, probably will be not too long. Uh, okay, so we're going to repeat a tradition that we read yesterday. Shetei Gizus Tara'ot, regarding the Mishnah of throwing from one place to the other. Amadav Mishum Rebi Hiya Agalot, Tachtehen Ubenehen, Vesidehen Reshu Tarabim. We're going back. This is what generated the entire discussion here yesterday about the Mishkan. And so um, he's, uh, we mentioned that the Agalot themselves, uh, underneath them and between them and on the sides of them, that's all considered the Shut Hadabim, uh, even, though, uh, even though that's, um, you know, they're, they're somewhat partially covered. Um, uh, there's still this, a lot of people walking in that way. And so that's called, called the Shut Hadabim. Amad Abayeh. Ben agala la agala, kimlo orech agala. So we're analyzing one more thing in this regard. Between the agalot, uh, this, this picture is not as good as this one here. Um, the agalot is a tradition that there were four agalot and they went in two pairs, two here and two behind. And so it says the agalot were as long, that's five, um, five. Oh, this, they, they were five here, this way. They also were five with the wheels, from, it was from wheelbase to wheelbase. Here, this is better. The, the platform itself was two and a half amot, and then the wheels were one and a quarter and one and a quarter on each side. So then, the, in other words, it would, make a, it would fill out a square with the wheels, five by five. And so this tradition says that between the agalot are five amot, which is the same as the, with the, the length of the agala. Uh, ben agala, kimlo, orech agala. Vekame orech agala, how long is an agala? Hamesh Amot five. Lam Mali Barba Upalga Sege. Why do you need why do you need five? Four and a half would be enough. This is kind of repeating, going back to something we said yesterday. Um, each each of the beams is one and a is um, one and a half lengthwise. If you put three, one and a half, one and a half, one and a half, you get four and a half. So why do you need five? One and four and a half would be enough. So that they don't bang into each other, we leave some space between them, maybe they put some. Uh, filler in between to protect them from banging up against each other. Okay, this looks like it, it doesn't remember what we did yesterday because yesterday we said different options and we said we turned it on the side on the short on the short one. So um, this looks like a kind of separate discussion than the, the one we did yesterday, almost like a de Amre or a separate sugya. Okay, Amarava, Sidi Agala, Kimedo, Rohav Agala, on the sides also was as was as much as the width. Uh, so what he just said is that the width of the platform is two and a half, and the outsides are one and a quarter and one and a quarter, which also make up uh, two and a half. And so what do I need that for? Why do I need it? Why do I need this to be so wide? In any case, I'm done balancing the the, the, the beam on it, so it could be shorter and I could still balance the beam. Yeah, but that wouldn't be very balanced and it's not gonna have much leverage, right? Even with two and a half, it uh, seems a bit wobbly with less than that would be even less. Okay. Ella de Kaimalan derech, yes, answer is kiyechi de la li dadu kedashim, so they don't teeter. Ella de Kaimalan derech reshu tarabim shesh asre ama, anan de gamlina na mishkan, de mishkan ha misre havai. Okay, it's very important in practical law. Um, there's a tradition that Rishut Tarabim is defined as a thoroughfare that is 16 amot wide, right? There are two definitions. One is the number of people, 600,000. So we saw Penn Station uh, does carry that many people per day, but it's covered, so it's okay. Um, but the other, other way of calculating Rishut Tarabim is if it's 16 amot wide. And we know that we derive that from the Mishkan. Um, but we see here that when they were carrying the Mishkan, we have five for the Agala, five in between, and another five for the next Agala. That makes 15 altogether, not 16. So what, 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 where's the extra Ama? Ah, we, can, we need an extra one because when the, the Levim would stand, around the sides, they would stand on the side here and they stand on the side here or somewhere in between. Um, and so that just in case, once some of the beams should uh, get loose, they would uh, secure it 
And so they were always walking on the sides here and that make, creates an extra uh, ama, I guess half an ama here, half an ama there. And then you get an extra um, ama all together. Okay. Rabbi. Yes. But based on, on what we said yesterday, if we're balancing the kerashim on these wagons like that, wouldn't you need 20 amot? Uh, yeah, oh, very good question. You do need 20 amot, but we're not counting the overhang, right? So it's only, it's the, the, the overhang is up in the air, it's high, uh, so it doesn't, doesn't count for anything. It's the, it's the wheelbase, it's from the wheelbase to wheelbase, right? But you're right, in fact, in fact, it would extend even further out. We're, we're not counting the, the, the overhang, but we're counting the person standing on the side? Yeah, because he's standing on the floor. He's walking on the floor. So it's the, it's the floor area that will be, is covered by the encampment. Okay. Right, that's a good point. Uh, okay, next Mishnah. Mishnah. <laughs> Okay, this is very fundamental definitions of different Yishuyot. If I have a, 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 a pit in the ground um, or a boulder. So either way, if it is 10 amot high, right, about the 30 inches, and four amot wide, about a foot, a foot by a foot, right, then that's considered the Shut HaYachid. So in other words, if I was walking in, the, you know, if I see a little table, like a little picnic table or something, or stool, right? If it's ten amot high, that's a called a shute yachid. So if I'm walking in the street and I put something on top of that table, that would be hayav. And just like it applies going up from the ground, so too it applies going down. If there's a hole that's ten tefachim deep and an ama uh, and, uh, and, uh, and four tefachim uh, wide, uh, then that also would be hayav, going up or going down. And so anyone who puts on it something is chayav. However, pachot miken, if it's smaller than that, right? So this is very important. If I have something that's, that's tall, but it's, it's, uh, but it's thinner than that, then that's called, that, that, then that is patur. Um, and we're going to see it's, it's, um, it's uh, called makom patur. And uh, putting something on it, um, is, it doesn't count as anything. Okay, let's see how this works. Now, why, uh, Gemma is wondering, why do you have to tell me Chuliyat See, so it doesn't say just board, but Chuliyat the bank of a pit. What does it mean, the bank of a pit? Litne um, habor v'hasela, just say, you know, going up or going down, whether it's a pit or a rock. Oh, this, this uh, teaches what Rabbi Yochanan says, if I have something that, let's say, has a bank around it that, let's say, is uh, a foot high, right? And there's a hole that goes down another, um, uh, another, another foot and a half, right? Um, so then they, they, they come together, right? So I could have a, something that's half underground and half above ground. If altogether it makes ten tefachim, then that also is considered a reshut hayachid. If it's also wide, four tefachim. So that's what that comes to teach. It doesn't have to be all above or all below. Tanyan na mihachi, we have another b'raita that teaches the same thing. Bor, reshut harabim, amuka asara, urchaba arba'a, en mimalein hemenna, uh, so a uh, hole in the ground that is 10 deep and four wide, um, uh, you cannot um, uh, fill water. It's, let's say a board, a, a cistern um, that is that big. You cannot uh, fill up a, a cup from it because then or you would be carrying from, from there outside. That's a reshut that cistern, that hole is a reshut Unless you made a fence around it, so, right, so that would be okay. Right, if you had a pit and you made a fence around it, then the whole area is a shutachid. You can walk in there, and then you can fill up your cup and drink it, uh, drink it there, and then uh, put down the cup and then you, and then leave. That would be okay. Um, and if you don't do that, if there's no fence. Then you have to kind of climb into the into the into the board. Not totally. You can just you know lean your head and body over uh, over it and drink from there. And as long as most of your body is in the pit, 
uh, that is not carrying because you're drinking it right there on the spot. This is the part that we need, that a pit and the bank that is above ground join together to make 10. Okay, this halakha, by the way, that you have to drink if you see a, 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 a well or a cistern on the, in, in the middle of the road and you want to drink from it, that you have to go inside is very interesting because we find the same halakha in the, uh, in the Dead Sea Scrolls. I'll show you here. Yeah, this is in the Damascus document. It says, uh, if, if a person was on a journey, if he was on a journey and went down to bathe, he may drink where he stands, but he may not draw water into a vessel, right? So you're going down. This is not exactly the same. You're bathing, I don't know, in a lake or something. Um, and so you could drink on the spot because you're not carrying because you're standing in it, but you can't take a vessel and then carry it out. Uh, it's not exactly the same, but it's very, it is very similar to that halacha. Um, okay, good. So that's, now we learned that going up or going down, it all counts and there has to be 10 tefachim high to be, uh, to be considered shut ha'achid. Now we have a series of interesting questions. Okay, he seems to be asking a simple question, but it's actually complicated. Um, if I take uh, a, an item, I take a ball or something, and I throw it on a post or a little table, and the table is ten tefachim high and four, amot, four tefachim wide, so this, it fits the definition of reshut ha'achid. And I'm, and in, I'm in the reshut ha'abim, and I throw it on top of it, on top of the, uh, on top. So it looks like it should be chayav. I have akira bisur. I left my hand in the reshut ha'abim, and it landed in the reshut ha'achid. So do I say that's asur? It would seem so. Or dilma, but maybe not. Keman dimimekom patur ka'atya la. It's coming from makom patur. What does that mean? Above ten tefachim, as we saw before, the airspace is not considered part of the ground. The airspace of Rishut Rabim above ten tefachim is considered its own Rishut. And similarly, above the Rishut Ayachid is not considered part of it. Remember when we threw something from, the, from Rishut Rabim over Rishut Ayachid into Rishut Rabim and said patur, because it never landed and never went into its airspace. So in this case, if I take something here and I throw it up, so when I, while I'm throwing it up, it's up here above ten tefachim. When it lands, it's not coming from the shut harabim to the shut hayachid, but rather going from the shut harabim where I'm standing. I throw it up, it goes into makom patur, right? Uh, just it's no, no man's land. And then it lands from onto the, onto the, on top of here from, from makom patur. And so therefore, I should be patur. I should not be liable. That's his question. All right, it's a very interesting question. Amale, so he asked this, he asked Rava, some have Rabba here with the hair. Anyway, he said, Matnitini, it's a Mishnah. Atashe lel Rav Yosef, Amale Matnitini, it's an easy Mishnah. Atashe lel Abaya, Amale Matnitini, everybody's saying the same thing. It's clearly not allowed, and it's a Mishnah. Amale hu, kulechu, beru, which Mishnah? Our Mishnah, we just saw, right? It says, if it's Tentavachim Hai, and what's the difference if you throw something, if you place something on it? Uh, they're assuming that those, the cases are the same. And so, therefore, they're just assuming that it would be, it would be uh, chayab. So, Mordechai says, you're all, you're all spitting out the same spit, right? You all just keep saying the same thing, but nobody is answering my question, right? You're just, you're quoting the source, but you're not explaining the logic why it should be so. We have a tension here between the tradition of the Mishnah and the, and the logic of it, because the Mordechai is making a good point, right? It is, reason, it is reasonable. The Mishnah says if you put it on top, chayav, but really, if you're, if, you're, if you're lobbing it on top, then it's going through makom patur. So, amru ve'at latiz noten al gaban chayav. Don't you have the Mishnah? It says if you put, on some, put it on there or take it off that, that, that item, then chayav. So you have the Mishnah. Dilma matnitin So he says, I, I, can't, I cannot explain the Mishnah simply 